they invited him to their local churches. So they were interdenominational from the beginning and he just preached one message. And that encouraged them and this is how, this is how they gave themselves the name Torchbearers. We want to be a light that is carried to where we came from. And, and, and Torchbearers actually, they, they have as their source, of course, the rediscovery of, of what the Gospel is all about. But we shouldn't presume that we are the only ones who preach it. Wherever it is preached, it has the same results. People rediscover uh, that, that Jesus didn't only die for our sins, but he lives for our lives, you know. The biggest revival in Luther's heart was to discover, uh, to discover that Christ is alive. And if you read uh, his old sermons, his evangelistic sermons of the Reformation, they are full of what actually, where the, where the apostles started in the Acts. They started, Christ is alive. He died for you, but he is alive. So they introduced people to a living Christ who died for them. And the whole thing made sense. And so it's nothing sensational and new, but it just has been forgotten. The essence of torchbearers is in the name. Um, we're bearers of something. And I think the beautiful thing is that God has made us to bear him, literally, not just obviously in, in a spiritual sense, but in a, a full, holistic way. So if we're bearers of his life because we've come to him in, in need and depravity and in bankruptcy, and we become an expression of Christ, that's awesome. And that means we're torches, we're a light, we're, we're a presentation to the world. We're bringing authenticity into a world that knows nothing but confusion and emptiness and lostness and despair. There's no secret to torchbearers. The only secret to torchbearers is the revealed truth of Scripture. And the revealed truth of Scripture says that Jesus came not just to die for us, but to live in us. And when Jesus comes to take up residence in the life of a Christian, if that Christian is willing to die to themselves and get out of the way, Jesus is more than willing and able to be in a position where he can reproduce his life in this world. When you're done, when you're as old as me, what people want from us is how well can you get to know God? How did you get to know God? How do you hear the voice of God? I get asked it all. Does it, is it a voice in my head? Is it a noise in my head? And uh, the essence of the impact of your life will be how well you knew God. And that's the essence, basically, of torchbearers, helping people into the heart of God. You can't live the Christian life, and God never said you could. But he can, and he always said he would. That, to me, is the essence of torchbearing. And I understood it then, and have been spending the rest of my life learning it. Um, that though I love to teach the Bible and know the Word and love Jesus, that it's one thing to um, know what He taught. It's another thing to let Him change us, to make us what He teaches us we should be. People are searching to find God in all sorts of ways, all sorts of roads, because people fear that they may be judged, they may be condemned, they don't know what lies ahead. So torchbearers really is allowing Jesus to answer the question that they posed for themselves because he said, I am the way, I am the truth, and I am the life. If he is the truth about the way to find life, torchbearers fundamentally wants them to hear Jesus give the answer. So our privilege is to bring people onto the way, to show them the way, and then discover the truth about what it is to live in Jesus. It's all about people. Why not? People are our first missionary service. People, people. And we are people persons and we love people and 
We want them to find Christ, who is the life of every Christian. And we want people who are not Christians to come and find him and become torchbearers, carrying the torch of faith into a dark, dismal, miserable world. That's all it's about.